Joining us today is Anthony Frieda, an illustrator who has produced some very thought-provoking art. It's political, but it makes you think. And he's done illustrations for Time, The New Yorker, Rolling Stone, Esquire, Business Week, Playboy, New York Times, you name it. He's been out there, and he's got some interesting stories to tell us about not only how he came to his art, came to his political views, but also about censorship that he's encountered along the way. Anthony, welcome. So great to have you here. Great to be and here. You've been in on the war on terror. You spotted that early on, and you had a lot to say about that with your pictures. And I say you had a lot to say about it because, you know, the tired adage that a picture is worth a thousand words, but you can really zoom in on the essence of an issue the way you do these illustrations. It's amazing. But you've been doing that since the early days of the war on terror, didn't you? I have. I've been commenting on these issues for a long time, and I like to think of myself as an anti-war artist at, at the heart of what I do. That's kind of the preeminent ideas I want to get across. So you must have experienced some censorship like we're seeing with this recent case with the NSA coming after this artist that was making fun of their logo. Clearly not infringing on some kind of, as if the NSA could have a copyright on a logo because it's a government organization, but he's certainly not selling these shirts to people who are now pretending to go out and be NSA agents on the yeah. street. Right. Well, if, if those are the standards that apply, then they can come after a lot of the work I did. But I have had stuff banned. Um, I did a painting of um, Dick Cheney in, in an electric chair, mm -hmm. which I think is just, you know, I mean, <laughs> he is guilty of capital crimes. That's right. or he's, you know, allegedly guilty of capital crimes, um, uh, the war crimes that he's... Well, we were just talking before the interview. Have, uh, yeah. That you, you said there's a, a lawyer who said that every one of the persons who's died... Mr. Boyelsi is, is working on a program that, I mean, he's, you know, the guy who prosecuted Charles Manson, he's a famous prosecutor, and he says that according to the law, um, the people who lied us into Iraq are guilty uh, for murder, literally a murder charge for every single American soldier that died in Iraq because they sent those kids in there on fraudulent pretexts and that is a capital crime. How do we get to the situation where the government can lie to people, the government can commit crimes, and they're never held accountable for it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think we just, because we just let them get away with it, you know? We just let this kind of top-down system happen, and, and um, we had trust in our institutions, and in the bankers, and in the lawmakers, and in the, you know, the, um, the politicians, and... Um, we had too much trust in them. You know, we, we weren't skeptical enough. And, and, you know, we get heat. People think like you and I do for being skeptical of government. But I think the very predicament we're in right now is because we weren't skeptical enough. Mm -hmm. And that's really the heart of it. You know, it's, it's um, question, asking questions is, is not a bad thing. Yeah. That's, that's really the heart of any kind of freedom or any kind of democracy is, we, you know, with transparency and, and question, asking questions. It's, this is not a subversive thing. This is part of the, the you know, interest, intrinsic part of the process that needs to be exercised more, and it's not. To paraphrase Patrick Henry, he's essentially said liberty is a jewel, and if anybody comes close to that, you guard that very carefully. You watch everything that they're doing. Because yeah. that's a tremendous temptation. It is like some kind of a precious jewel that they could take because there's a lot of value for them to be able to do anything that they want to yeah. without any restrictions, which is where they are right now. They, they like that. That's always been a major temptation. They understood that. There were men who understood the nature of power. But we have become so naive and so trusting yeah. that we don't pay any attention to that. We don't question what they tell us. And it's this, it's this war against our liberties on in an incremental basis. So... De Tocqueville said, um, you know, the war against uh, freedom will happen with a million tiny cuts. Yes. Until one day you wind up and you can't move. And they're all, you know, seemingly well-meaning, you know, well-intentioned things. Well, that makes sense, you know, on some level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at some point you realize you, you can't move. Well, we see Everything that is the, illegal. We see that with the Second Amendment. When they used the phrase, when they talked about the First Amendment, they knew that you could come in and you could you could take away the First Amendment with just a quick law. But they knew that with the Second Amendment, people would fight if they realized <laughs> that was happening, right? So they talked about infringement. Infringement is like you've got a piece of property and somebody gradually moves their fence onto your property a little bit at a time. Yeah. And before you know it, they've got the whole thing because you allow them to move that onto your property and you allow it to stay 
then it essentially becomes theirs. Yeah. And that's what we've allowed is an infringement on every area. It's not just the Second Amendment. Certainly as the Fourth Amendment, when you look at what's happening with the TSA, yeah. you've had cartoons about uh, that, I'm sure, uh, illustrations. Well, the TSA is, you know, it's kind of... <laughs> something that motivates me because it's just it's something you have to actually interact with it's not some abstract concept like you see them you know you feel them putting their hands on you and yes it's a physical manifestation of the police state that you know you kind of block out of your mind i came in here from uh kennedy airport and there was three lines there was one for the naked body scanners there was one for this new thing which is they squab your hands hmm. and for explosive residue and then there was the pat down. So you, you had to go down one of these three lines, and, and we wound up going down to this weird swabbing of your hands. Hmm. And of course, they're not going to find any residue. They're going to swab millions of people's hands, just like they swab millions and millions of people's, sh or, you know, check millions of people's shoes, never found one bomb, not mm -hmm. one, zero. That's right. They're going to find zero bomb residue on these people. They might find some guy who has, like, you know, fertilizer on his hand because he's a farmer. They'll probably, you know. And I'm amazed that people don't react to that more viscerally. You know, you, you talk about it. It's not some abstract thing. People see that the NSA yeah. is listening to their phone calls. That's not really real for them. Yeah. There was a comedian, Tom Mabe, and he went out and he had a uh, boom mic, and he dressed up like a government agent in a black suit with uh, sunglasses and a headset. And he goes out and he holds this boom mic over people who are just having a normal conversation on a park bench. And they immediately get incensed because they realize what an affront that is to their dignity, to their yeah. privacy. And yet, it's kind of abstract when people are talking about, oh, they're listening to your phone conversations, and they call it metadata. It's like, oh, I don't know what metadata is. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so they allow them to get away with that. But when you go to the TSA and you see them doing this to people, they're doing it to you, they're doing it to children, that's not something, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me that people can tolerate that. Well, it's that. intimidating. I mean... That's the thing. Dude. It's like um, when you're there, and I was there. You are intimidated. It's a physical presence. It's an intimidation. You know, you're. We were late for our plane, and it's like, am I going to make a big stink? Am I going to, you know, be detained for nine hours? It's BF Skinner. Yeah. It's positive operant conditioning. You know, you've got something that you want. You want to get on that plane. Yeah. Are you going to cooperate? If you cooperate, you'll be immediately rewarded with access to the plane. Yeah. If you don't, you get negative conditioning, right? <laughs> so that's the way they do it. They offer this carrot to people. It's the same thing he does with dolphins, okay, yeah. or dogs. It's a great way to train animals, and it works on humans as well. And the name of his book was Beyond Freedom and Dignity. That's what the TSA is about. It's and about it works. Taking... And you know, there's part of you that know it's, it's an affront to your dignity, and, and you know it's an affront to your freedom, and, and you know it's, it's, not, it's just security theater. It's nothing you're really going to save anybody swabbing your hands. Please, it's, it's ridiculous. Like some guy who just, you know, fused a bomb was going to put his hands out there. It's ridiculous. Right, right. It's idiotic. It's, it, it's, it's so ridiculous when you actually think about it. It makes no sense. Why would a guy who just made a bomb go and put his hands out? He wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Hold that thought right there, Anthony. Well, that's it for tonight. We're out of time, but you can get the second half of this interview tomorrow night. We're going to talk to Anthony Frieda about how he developed his art style, how he woke up politically, and what it's like to work in mainstream media, the kind of pressures that he comes under. You can catch that tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139.
been in on the war on terror, you spotted that early on, and you had a lot to say about that with your pictures. And I say you had a lot to say about it because, you know, the tired adage that a picture is worth a thousand words, but you can really zoom in on the essence of it. He's been out there, and he's got some interesting stories to tell us about not only how he came to his art, came to his political views, but also about censorship that he's encountered along the way. Anthony, welcome. So great to have you here. Great to be here. Joining us today is Anthony Frieda, an illustrator who has produced some very thought-provoking art. It's political, but it makes you think. And he's done illustrations for Time, The New Yorker, Rolling Stone, Esquire, Business Week, Playboy, New York Times. You name it. An issue, the way you do these illustrations is amazing. But you've been doing that since the early days of the War on Terror, didn't you? I have. I've been commenting on these issues for a long time. And I like to think of myself as an anti-war artist. At, at the